Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Good Book Hunting, the feature where four Westfield librarians find you read-alike for super popular titles. In the month of February, we are doing something extra special, which is that for the first time, we are doing not adult books, and we are also celebrating winners or honors from the recently released Youth Media Awards from the American Library Association, otherwise known as the ALA. And these are, you know, the big shiny stickers that that we often see the Caldecott the, and the Newberry Award, which are awards for picture books and juvenile fiction, we've already done in previous episodes. So if you'd like to see those, check back on the playlist and give them a watch. In each one, we um, show you a different resource and how to use that. So each one's unique and funny. And I think this has been so far quite an adventure with some of the results that we've gotten. I think at least each of us are already has had at least one episode where we're like, what is happening? So just kind of shows you that even we sometimes have to realize that one resource is not always the place you want to go and we'll help you to find more books. Today we are going to be talking about the Michael Prince Award. This is our very first time doing a YA novel so we're super excited and in order to actually do a YA novel uh, we will be not actually be doing the winner. The winner of the Michael Prince Award this year was Everything Sad is Untrue, A True Story by Daniel Nayeri. And that is technically a juvenile fiction book. The Prince Award covers winners from about uh, 12 to 18 or some very bizarre age range that can cover both juvenile fiction and teen books. And we definitely wanted to do a teen book for you guys because we already did the Newberry winner, which was When You Trap a Tiger by Tay Keller. So there were um, several honor books this year. So we have chosen to do Dragon Hoops, which was created by Jean Luen Yang and The Color by Lark Pien. And it was published by First Second Books, an imprint of Macmillan. Why all of those words? Because this is also the first time that we're going to be doing a graphic novel. So super exciting, just all around. And I can't wait. In this episode, I will be showing you the CW Mars Overdrive catalog. This is the e catalog for ebooks and e audiobooks. I will be showing it to you via my computer browser. However, this is most often used as an app on your phone, either called Overdrive or Libby, that you have access to with your library card for more reading. After I show you how this works, we will check back in with my fabulous colleagues and they will show you what they've found. If you're ready, unfortunately for you, I have to keep talking. <laughs> but I'm going to share my screen and we'll get going. Okay, so you could just type into your browser the uh, CW Mars Overdrive site. But if you don't actually know what that website is, it's super easy. You can just Google CW Mars overdrive and the first thing that comes up is this right here cwmars.overdrive.com the overdrive bit is how you know that you're headed for the digital collection not the catalog which you would use to get physical items from the library so i am already signed into my account but if i weren't there would be a purple sign in button right here you would click that and sign in with your library card. The CW Mars digital collection has a lot of really awesome buttons over here besides just the regular search bar. So for example, you could search by subject and this brings you to so much different stuff that you could click on. And then you can also limit it by ebooks or audiobooks, magazines, and videos. All of those things are available on CW Mars Overdrive. They also have different collections. So, for example, if you cannot wait, there are buttons for available now in both ebooks and audiobooks. And that means that you can download those right now and start reading in the next five seconds. And you can also see what's new just general ebook or audio editions. And then there are also sections for kids and teens, most popular and try something different. 
So it's really, really worth just clicking around and exploring to find something new. If you are using CW Mars Overdrive with some kiddos, there's also a kid specific tab, which will bring them to a selection of books uh, just for them. So right now, this always changes, but it's the Massachusetts Children's Book Award candidates for this year. Then there's new stuff, hero up, picture books, and always available diverse reads, and it just keeps going and going. So today, though, we're going to be focused on teen books. So we'll get out of here. There's the same exact thing available for teens. And right now, this has new stuff on top, always available, watch them grow, diverse reads, and you can keep going. They always have brand new collections for you to browse through. But right now, we are looking for dragon hoops. And typed it into the search bar, and look at that. Dragon Hoops pops right up. This tab right here tells us that there is a wait for this book. It is not currently available, but we can place a hold by clicking this button or add it to a list that we can look at later because maybe we don't want it right now, but we definitely don't want to forget about it. There's that shiny old sticker. It's already on it. It's amazing. So when you click into the book, it will tell you how many copies are available. Right now there's zero of three. You can hover over this little question mark and it will tell you that actually there is no wait list. This is really awesome. Um, so you would be the first in line for one of those copies if you clicked on it. Then you get a description of the book. Um, in this latest graphic novel, um, Yang turns a spotlight on his life, his family, and high school where he teaches. So this is a sports book, if you didn't get that by the basketball on the cover. And over here, if you are an adult who needs to know this for school or something, it tells you the ATOS level, the Lexel measure, um, interest, text difficulty. Oftentimes, you know, maybe you don't subscribe to these, but I know some schools do. So that might be of interest. And you can read a sample if you aren't really sure if you want to get this book out right now. So if we scroll down, and this is what we're really here for, you get the you may also like. Now, as we have discovered in these past couple of episodes, unfortunately, the you may also like function on overdrive is not that great. You can see more, you can see all by clicking this, and it normally gives you quite a large selection. And you keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. And it will give you a selection of books. Often these books are available. It's kind of the reason they show up on the bottom is that if Dragon Hoops, for example, is checked out, you can get something right now. And so the top five on this list are A Boy's Guide to Becoming a Teen, Getting Used to Life in Your Changing Body by the American Medical Association. I feel like that's fairly self-explanatory and might not be what you're looking for if you were hoping for a fun sports graphic novel. This one, let's click on this one. This is A Game for Swallows, To Die, To Leave, To Return. This is young adult nonfiction. And it's about Zena, who was born in the, during the Civil War in Lebanon, and the story of her life. So, and this again is available. The third one is Fat No More, A Teenager's Victory Over Obesity by Alberto Hildago Robert. Feel like once again, that's slightly self-explanatory and may not be what you're looking for right now. We also have The Dark Game by Paul B. Jankovitz. Jan no, I did not say that right at all. We'll pretend that never happened. True spy stories from invisible ink to CIA moles. This actually sounds fascinating. So this is again, young adult nonfiction and 
Ever since George Washington used them to help topple the British, spies and their networks have helped and hurt America at key moments in history. Wow, I actually think this sounds quite fascinating, even if it does not have anything to do with basketball. And I'm not going to go through all of these, but the fifth one on their list is Grace, Gold, and Glory, My Leap of Faith by Gabrielle Douglas. Gabrielle Douglas is a gymnast. And this again would be a young adult nonfiction biography. And it is her biography um, as the first African American gymnast in Olympic history to become the individual all around champion in 2012. So again, we have definitely had this problem in the past where these books are not the best, but they are available. So it might be worth a scroll to check it out. But if you don't like what it gives you underneath the book you actually searched for, definitely use these collections buttons up here and really take a tool around because they're really awesome and they're what I use all the time. So with what I found not being super spectacular, let's check back in with my wonderful coworkers and get some better stuff from them. All right, so we are back. And for this round, Olivia is using the catalog, Erica is using Novelist, and Anne is using Google. And we would like to leave catalog and the Novelist for last because sometimes my resource and Anne's resource are like, wow, weird. So uh, Anne, you've been able to use Google successfully once. <laughs> so, Go ahead and uh, tell us what you found. Yeah, today Google, I don't know, Google is such a mishmash of information and things come up with different searches, as we all know. Um, and the rabbit hole can get really big, really fast. If I were to say from, from searching this book, sort of similar books to Dragon Hoops, I would just look at the first list of books that Google gives you. And it's Dragon Hoops slash people also search for these following books. And those books, at least by title and whatnot, seem to have some similarities. The next closest option that I had was um, Goodreads. Unfortunately, the list kept going on. There were blogs about Dragon Hoops. Amazon.com, every bookseller from here to Alaska was listing that they have this book to sell. So those were, unfortunately, it was not a really good um, day for finding lists that Dragon Hoops is part of. Again, I could go ahead and list what people also searched for, but I'll give you what Book reads, Goodreads offers. Um, if you remember, we've looked at Goodreads before and they will list their readers sort of um, recommend books that are similar to Dragon Hoops or books that they've liked. Um, and the first book that shows up is Class Act um, by Jerry Craft. Eighth grader Drew Ellis is no stranger to the saying, you have to work twice as hard to be just as good. His grandmother has remained, has reminded him his entire life. But what if he works 10 times as hard and still isn't afforded the same opportunities as privileged classmates in Riverdale Academy Day School take for granted? Um, the second book that they recommend is When Stars Are Scattered. Um, Omar and his younger brother, Hassan, have spent most of their lives in Dadaab, a refugee camp in Kenya. Life is hard there, never ending food, never enough food, sorry, never ending food would be entirely wrong, but sorry, achingly dull and without access to medical care, Omar knows his nonverbal brother needs. Um, the third book that we have from Goodreach is Flamer by Mike Corrado, um, and it's sort of the tagline into it is, I know I'm not gay, boys like other boys, I hate boys. They're mean, scary, and they're always destroying something or saying something dumb or both. And sorry, the last book that Goodreads offers us, or actually Goodreads offers a lot, um, but I will just stop here and it's called 
almost American Girl, a teen graphic. Again, now we've finally gotten to definitively a graphic novel, a teen graphic novel memoir about a Korean-born, non-English speaking girl who is abruptly transplanted from Seoul to Huntsville, Alabama, um, and struggles with the cultural shock. It's a graphic novel. It's about teenagers, different, different cultural context, but by, by trying to figure yourself out in a different context, perhaps, that connection. But I'll let you guys comment who are, are more familiar with, with what I've just talked about than I am. So in this particular case, if you watched our episode on picture books where I was just like flailing in the corner when everybody brought up their lists, in this particular case, Olivia is the person who knows all because Olivia uh, is not only the head of youth services, but she is also the teen librarian. So, and also a graphic novel reader which I read teen books, but I don't read graphic novels. So I think we'll leave Olivia till last so she can pass judgment on everything that comes up. Um, <laughs> so Erica, would you like to tell us what novelist showed up for you? Certainly. So um, the first one we got was a uh, band book club by Hyun Suk Kim, uh, which is, um, it looks like it's another autobiographical comic, balancing cartoony images with deep themes about hope and triumph whether it's over a totalitarian regime in Band Book Club or the, on the basketball court, which is in Dragon Hoops. And that feels like a very, very different uh, <laughs> levels of severity there. Um, the next one is uh, Addicts by Philip M. Hoos, uh, which is prose nonfiction um, about uh, the basketball team from the Crispus Addicts High School and how they broke uh, color barriers in the segregated 1950s Indiana. Um, so both books combine on the court action with sports history as they profile elite high school basketball teams. So that one's just a straight book. It's not a graphic novel like Dragon Hoops is, but still about basketball, about pushing boundaries, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Drama High by Michael Y. Sokolov. Um, I'm, I'm, guessing that's how it's pronounced is probably not correct. Um, so this is more of, this is an adult book um, and it's about a drama club that's trying out controversial Broadway shows like Rent and Spring Awakening before the productions are released to other schools and community theaters. Um, so even though uh, Dragon Hoops is published as YA, it's at its core a memoir of being an educator. So Drama High balances the teacher's perspectives and the lives of the students who are ethnically and culturally diverse. So kind of getting that diversity while also being about schools. Uh, I'm not sure, just looking at the kind of quick little blurb, if it's a graphic novel or not. I don't think it is. Um, my guess is just it's just a straight memoir. Um, the next one is Kuroko's Basketball, which looks like a sports manga by Tadatoshi Fujibaka sorry, Fujimaki, and um, it just looks like a, a, a basketball manga, so um, yeah, both books have the genre comics and graphic novels in the subjects, high school basketball, high schools, and sports, and then lastly, we have uh, Check, Please by Nyozi Ukazu, I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced, again, I apologize if it's incorrect, um, both of these books have the genres comics and graphic novels and web comics, the subjects high schools, and have illustrations that are charming. Um, so this is about a, uh, a figure skater who goes to college on a hockey scholarship, and he kind of has to overcome some fears of getting hit and also deal with romance on the team. So that one's another comic. Um, maybe less uh, deep than Dragon Hoops, but it definitely sounds adorable. So I'm all here for it. Well, at least Erica got like sports books. I feel like my sports books were very, very odd. So with that being said, we will head over to Olivia who used the catalog and also um, has actually read some of these books and can maybe <laughs> tell us how good we were. Again, Overdrive, just, just, just discount me from this conversation. That is what we've learned. But, uh, you know, Anne and Erica are still relevant. 
Yeah, so I'll start by talking about the books that I found through the catalog that might be good read-alikes for people who enjoy Dragon Hoops or are waiting for it. Um, I had a little bit of trouble because the subjects were very specific and every time I clicked on it, it only returned Dragon Hoops. So that was kind of problematic. So instead I went with genre and I did sports comics. So like Erica, all of these have sports in them and we actually did get other basketball books and one weird one that I'm not so sure about. Um, the first one that came back is A Taste for Victory by Brandon Terrell. Um, and it is a Jake Maddox graphic novel, which is a series. Um, and this is um, about Hank wants, want, Watson enjoying helping his basketball team win big games. However, his true passion is cooking. And Hank doesn't tell his team that he likes to cook because he's afraid they'll make fun of them. Um, and it does feature um, a person of color as the main character. The next one is the comic book story of basketball, a fast break history of hoops. So if you had someone who really enjoyed dragon hoops for the basketball aspect and they want to learn more about it, I would probably recommend this book to them. Um, like I said, it's just the graphic novel history of basketball. So uh, makes it a little easier to read for some people. And then the next one is My Little Pony, Feats of Friendship. Um, don't really know why this came back as one of the top picks. Um, apparently the um, My Little Pony characters are on a team to collect apples. So it got labeled as a sports comic. Um, probably gonna ignore that one. Next up, we have Home Ice Rivals by Brandon Terrell, which is also part of the Jake Maddox graphic novels. Um, this one is about hockey. And um, it is about Benji, who loves playing hockey, but um, is upset when his parents announce that they're having a baby and the family will have to move. So he'll have to overcome um, some disappointments and probably making new friends. Lastly, we have Splatoon Squid Kids Comedy Show, which I'm pretty sure is a manga because it is produced by Viz or published by Viz Media, which is a, um, a manga um, publishing house. And this one is New Inklings Take Center Stage as, their and, as they and their friends embark on hilarious escapades in the world of Splatoon, the popular video game series from Nintendo. So Splatoon, you do have to work in teams, so there's a little bit of a team aspect. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a sport, but hey. Um, as far as everyone else's responses, I'm gonna have to agree with Gretchen to ignore the suggested books from Overdrive. Um, maybe the only one is, um, I believe it was Gabby Douglas's book. Um, maybe that if people enjoyed the sports aspect um, of it. Um, ants were actually pretty good, especially if um, the person just really enjoyed Dragon Hoops for the graphic novel aspect of it. I read actually most of the books on Ants list, and I would say that they're pretty good recommendations. Um, and then I think Erica's or mine really have <laughs> the best. Um, Check Please is adorable, so please read that. Band Books Club. Yeah, I would say um, it's a little bit intense for probably what is happening in Dragon Hoops to compare those two, but if you are looking for someone who I think they're coming into their own and um, standing up for things that they believe in, it's a good rec. So ignore Overdrive, use the rest. <laughs> I think what's great about this is that it goes back to the point that I, I, I know that I made at the end of our Caldecott winner episode, but it's just like, this is why we are here. And while you can absolutely use any of these uh, things to find new books or to access books, your local librarians have the knowledge for a reason. So please call us or email us and please let us talk about books with you because it's not only our job, but it is something that we love. So give us a call. We're here. Uh, we are also available over email and we have a new chat that is available in the mornings, live chat, which many of us also man. So you might even get one of us. So come talk with us about books. And as always, just keep reading and we will be back with more fabulous children's books and terrible overdrive results in more episodes. So thanks everybody. Bye.